Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. We are going to do the AS Biology Chapter 6 and this is the topical. I have tried to get as many questions as I can on this chapter and I hope this is going to be helpful. Now first let's understand the Messerschmitt and Stahl experiment. You see if you have heavy nitrogen and all the DNA is labeled with heavy nitrogen, well it's going to come and fall in here at the bottom. Heavy is going to settle down. When you centrifuge it, it settles down. But if you give it light nitrogen, then the next in the next DNA replication, there is going to be one. This is going to be the heavy strand, and then this is going to be the light strand. So the DNA is going to be made up of a heavy and light strand. This will sort of come and settle down here in the middle because it will be one strand heavy, one light, so it will sort of come a medium weight. But if it's only light nitrogen, then it's going to come up here. You can see I've shown this arrow here. It's going to be here as light nitrogen means it's going to come to the surface of the test tube. So it's according to the weight how the DNA is going to settle at three different levels. If it's just got heavy nitrogen, both DNA strands have heavy nitrogen, then it's going to be here somewhere. So you've got to understand is heavy nitrogen is going to be here. One heavy one uh, light is going to be here and just the light one is going to be up here. So first understand this Meselson style experiment and then do the question on it. Question number one, the bacterium Estrichia coli or E. coli divides once every 50 minutes at 36 degrees Celsius. E. coli were grown on a medium containing heavy nitrogen until all of the bacterial DNA obtained heavy nitrogen, zero minutes. Some of the bacteria are removed from a heavy nitrogen medium and cultured in a medium with only light nitrogen. Some bacteria were collected after each of three generations. Their DNA was extracted and hybrid DNA contains heavy and light nitrogen. The diagram shows the possible positions upper, middle and lower of the bands of DNA. The actual position of bands in the first two samples are shown. So upper, middle, lower. You see in the upper one, if you look at the upper one, in the first one, zero minutes, all of it was heavy. So it all sank to the bottom of the test tube. So this this uh, this test tube is you know sort of this was the test tube which they had shown and you know they haven't I think this diagram is slightly incomplete. So everything was at the bottom and then you see then the at 50 minutes because there was one light and one this this area this part of the so it settled up here. You can see this is here where you saw it. Now it says which proportion of the DNA of the sample taken at 150 minutes will be at the upper position? Which proportion of the DNA sample? Okay, now let me explain this to you. Now another thing to remember in DNA replication is they see now look at the first one as I've shown you it's two out of two. Two strands of DNA both are heavy nitrogen. Now here is two out of four. Two are heavy and two are light, so two out of four. Then in this I have two out of eight. And then here I have two out of second, but you know, 16. But they haven't checked this out. They have asked you, in this question, they've asked you, which proportion of the DNA of the sample taken at 150 minutes will be at the upper position? Now, why is the answer 75%? This is what you have got to understand. The answer is 75%. Look at the answer, why? You see, what you have to realize is that one, two, three, four, five, six. Six strands were light nitrogen out of a total of eight strands. So six out of eight means three out of four means 75% were on the, they would reach the top. They would be at the top because this is all the light nitrogen. Not in this case, of course, this would be a much, much wider band because this would be quite a lot. Not in this two out of eight, but in this situation, it would be a very, 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 because there's going to be, you know, you've got to remember six. And then, of course, there would be at the medium area, there would be a blue and there would be uh, uh, the light one would come on the top. So you would get a test tube, something like this. So please understand this. Why am I saying 75%? Now, this is a normal DNA replication. And why have I given the blue 2 out of 2, 2 out of 2, 2 out of 4, 2 out of 8, 2 out of 16? There's been another graph exactly on this question. And you will be seeing how they're going to ask you this question again and again. In question number two, 
Uh, different tissues in a plant were supplied with a radioactively labeled substance to identify which tissues were actively synthesizing RNA. Now, if you look at the structure of RNA, it has deox it has ribose, uh, DNA has deoxyribose, four bases A, T, G, C, and A, U, G, C. The important thing that you have to see is what was only present in RNA and which was not present in DNA. So the only thing present in RNA is uracil and ribose. Uracil is not present in DNA, ribose is not present in DNA. But adenine is present in both all the RNAs and in the DNA. And inorganic phosphate is present in all the mRNAs in the DNA. There are three mRNAs, there are three RNAs, sorry. mRNA, tRNA, and ribosomal RNA. But it says uh, actively synthesizing mRNA. So it would be ribose and uracil, which is present only in RNA. So you have to understand the question. It's even given in the exam report. A very direct question, electron micrographs may show large numbers of ribosome forming chains along mRNA molecules. What is the advantage of this arrangement compared to when ribosomes appear singly on the mRNA? Polypeptides can be produced more rapidly. Very basic. Large number of ribosomes along chains of mRNA. Then which row is correct for adenine? Now what you have to remember is that purine has got U in it. So purine has a double ring and pyrimidine has a single ring. So now adenine always pairs up with thymine and there are two hydrogen bonds between them. C always pairs up with guanine and there are three hydrogen bonds. Remember C is the third letter of the alphabet A, B, C, D. So C and G always have three bonds. So now which row is correct for adenine? Now if I say adenine, purines are, I always make you remember it like this, purines are adenine and guanine, AUG August, 14th of August, Pakistan Independence Day. So adenine and guanine are purines. So if you know that, if you know that only then you can do this question. As a single no, U, purine, U, double ring. There's a U in the double ring as well. Single may you nahi hai. So you have to know these facts. You have to remember these facts. There's no way that I can sort of teach it to you in any other way. So purine, double ring, purines are adenine and guanine. So you better memorize this. Joins to its complementary base with three hydrogen bonds. No, that was wrong. C and G has three hydrogen bonds. Now there's something you need to memorize. Which row represents the correct features of the nitrogen based cytosine? Now, if adenine and guanine are purines, then other all, all the other cytosine, uracil, and thymine. Cytosine, uracil, and thymine. Please remember there are five bases that we talk about again and again in DNA and RNA. So, which represents the correct feature of the base cytosine? Cytosine has a single ring. It is not a purine and it joins uh, it by three hydrogen bonds. So C, three hydrogen bonds between cytosine and guanine at government college. A, T, G, C. A, T has two, G, C has three. And C is the third letter of the alphabet. Now, as you can see in this question, how I've drawn this diagram and I've explained this to you. So it's the same sort of question which was given earlier, uh, but then how had you to find this out? So uh, bacteria grown N15, several generation, all the DNA N15, some of the bacteria transferred containing N14, bacteria allowed to divide once, DNA of some of the extracted, analyzed DNA was all hybrid DNA. This was the situation. In another experiment, some bacteria from the medium with N15 were transferred into a medium of N14. The bacteria were allowed to divide three times. So one, one, two, and three times. The DNA of some of the extracted and analyzed. What is the composition? The composition of the DNA, the answer was C. And I just, I want you to sort of look at this diagram, understand it, pause the video here, and please understand it. Next question number seven. 
Bacteria are grown in a medium containing N15. So after several generations, all the DNA contain N15. Some bacteria transfer to medium containing a common isotope of N14. Bacteria are allowed to divide once the DNA of some of these bacteria are extracted and analyzed. The DNA was all hybrid. The remaining bacteria were left in the medium and the N14 allowed to die one more time. The DNA of some of these was extracted. Now this is this situation here, 50% here. Fifty percent was hybrid, and fifty percent. So, what is the composition? So, you had fifty percent of the hybrid DNA. So, hybrid DNA is the one which is N15 and N14. So, in this situation, if you look at this situation, this is the hybrid one. Is this, and this is so out of four, two out of four is fifty percent was hybrid DNA. But you have to understand to read the question very carefully. That is the only issue which uh, you have got to face. Question 8, which statements for tRNA are correct? Contains base pairing, yes. A, T, G, C, you know, this sort of, it's like a clover leaf. So it's going to wind out. It's only one polypeptide chain. It contains hydrogen bond. There's A here, there's T here. So there's hydrogen bond. There could be C here and G here. There would be hydrogen bonds. It contains uracil, yes. All RNAs contain uracil. There's no thymine and it's a single stranded. Then question number 9. The diagram shows the nucleotide sequence of a small section of a gene which is transcribed. The table shows the amino acid coded or by the 10 mRNA codons. What is the order of the four amino acids? Now, the first, the first thing which you've got to understand, which you all forget, is that this is the section of a gene. So this is the DNA. Now, how I do it is I always, you know, first convert it into because it says mRNA. So I'm going to write the mRNA under it. I'm not going to do it differently. I'm just going to do it. So, you know, T will be A. So this would be A, A, then G, then again A, A, then G, 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 then a C, and then A, A, and then a G. So first you convert the G. So now you know AAG. Now where was AAG in the mRNA? That has to be lysine. So you know it has to be either B or C because lysine was here and lysine was here. The rest of it is all rubbish. And then of course you know the next one was AA. AAG again. So lysine either comes twice, but here lysine has also come twice. Now here comes the third one is the deciding factor. So and then the next one was this. You see, so you have to divide this into boxes. I would do it like this. CCG would be GGC. Where is GGC? Let's look at that. There's gly here, there is pro here, this is wrong. So, read the question very carefully, convert the DNA, and look at what is given in the amino acid shows you the mRNA codon. Sometimes they ask you for the tRNA, then you need to figure that out. DNA, right DNA, then mRNA, then tRNA. Then question number 10, what occurs during DNA replication and transcription and translation? So ATP provides energy, condensation reactions occur to form a polymer, yes, hydrogen bonds form between purine and pyrimidine, yes, all three of them, one, two, and three. If you have if stuck with this, you need to devise DNA replication, transcription, and translation. Go through the videos on this chapter. Ricin is a toxic protein, question 11, which inactivates ribosomes. Which effect will have this on protein synthesis? Inactivates ribosomes. So you remember now on the ribosomes, what happens is that the mRNA comes and gets attached. And of course, there is this AAA, UUU, and things like that. So the tRNAs come with the appropriate anticodon. So here it will be UUU, and they will bring amino acid number five. And then another one, another TR, uh, transfer RNA will come. And this will have AAA, 
and say to bring amino acid number 10. Now what has to form? There has to be a peptide bond formed between these amino acids. So no, but if, if the ribosome is not functioning well, the mRNA cannot be read into a protein. Forget the tRNAs, but basically it is to bring the right amino acid to this place. So peptide bonds will not form between adjacent amino acids in the growing polypeptide. So that's why the answer was this. Factual to remember, which row shows two pairs of nucleotides in a molecule of DNA? AT will always have two hydrogen bonds and CG will always have three hydrogen bonds. The protein P53 is produced in a cell to a cell in response to DNA damage. A scientist explores three groups of cells, X, Y, and Z, to different conditions. X, ionizing radiation, Y, ultraviolet light, Z, nicotine. In which groups would the scientists find large quantities of P53 mRNA? So X and Y. Why? Because ionizing radiation and ultraviolet rays are mutagens. Nicotine, of course, is taken in inhaled, so it will only happen in, uh, in which groups of cells? So nicotine, of course, will not cause any uh, other cell, but it will cause damage to the lung cells only. So and nicotine causes mutations. So uh, P53 is produced in a cell in response to DNA damage. Question 14. What is needed to transcribe DNA? From DNA, you have to make the mRNA. And to make the mRNA, you need the enzyme RNA polymerase. So if this is the DNA in transcription, in transcription, I always say that the script of the protein molecule, DNA to mRNA. And for RNA, you need RNA polymerase. Question 15, in a ribosome, which bond holds together two adjacent amino acids? Peptide bond. Find me anything else. Again, same question. The diagram shows part of a DNA, which how many hydrogen bonds are involved in these strands of DNA together? AT is 2, CG is 3. So 11 was the answer. Which plant diagram of a transfer section of a dicot leaf correctly shows the position of xylem and phloem in a palisade, which is twice as thick as a spongy? Well, that's not part of this chapter, I'm sorry. Uh, but the answer to that was C because you know the upper part is the leaf upper xylem. Then question number 18. Which type of sugar and types of bonds are found in a DNA molecule? The type of sugar is a reducing sugar deoxyribose and the type of bonds are covalent and hydrogen bonds, the phosphodiester bond and the um, hydrogen bonds, which types of sugar and types of bonds are found in a DNA molecule. Then number 19, which nucleic acid bases are purines, adenine and guanine? I told you to remember that A, U, G, purine, adenine and guanine. August is the month in which we have 14th of August Independence Day. So that's how you remember it. You have to make some mnemonic to remember it actually. A short piece of DNA is 15 base pairs long. Was analyzed to find the number of nucleotide bases in each of the polytectides and some of the results are shown below. A simple way is that you just add 6 plus 3, 9 plus 4, 13. And 15 minus 13 is equal to 2. So the answer was two. But if you want to really know how did this, how did I do this? If you look at this question, uh, this is how I have uh, tried to explain it to you. So this is strand one. And this is strand two, which I have not drawn. So we have got six C's in strand one. So these are the six C's that I've drawn. And then we have three T's. So one thymine, two, three thymines. And then in the second strand, we have four T's. So 
So this total is uh, 6 plus 3 plus 4 is equal to 13. But it said we had 15 base pairs long. So now this is giving you, so what is left there is now the G's here. Because we've done the, uh, we've done the, you see, because if you do a complementary base pairing, this would be an A here, A here, A here, and A here. And this would be uh, A here. Because it says 15 base pairs, and this would be all the G's here. It says how many nucleotides containing guanine were present in strand one? So in strand one, we have six C's three T's and four A's. So what is left is two G's. So that is why the answer was two. Question 21, which nucleic acid bases are pyrimidines? Well, I think it's a very easy way to remember it. C-U-T, cytosine, uracil, and thymine. So pyrimidines are, pyrimidines are cut, C-U-T. Question 22, what is the correct sequence for the processes involved in the formation of an enzyme in a cell? Transcription, translation, condensation, ionic bonding. A short piece of DNA base pairs was analyzed to find the number of nucleotide bases in each of the nucleotides, times 15 base pairs. The same question which has come earlier on, so I'm not going to do this again. 24, the following statements describe events that take place during DNA replication and transcription. Which row is not correct? The answer was C, the original DNA molecule is changed after the process. No, the original DNA molecule always remains the same. It didn't, during DNA replication and transcription, nothing happens to the original. And transcription occurs, yes, in both the cases, what is going to happen is that the original DNA molecule is changed. It says not correct. So yes, this was not correct. And this was also no and yes. You see, transcription does not always occur. It only occurs in transcription, not in DNA replication. Which statements about complementary base pairing are correct? Purines and pyrimidines are different sizes. It occurs during translation. The base pairs are of different length. Uracil forms two hydrogen bonds with adenine. No, it's ATGC. And if it's RNA, then it's AU. This T is missing. So this is only in DNA and this is in RNA. I always say to remember it uh, at government college, a uh, university government college. Then what is the minimum number of base substitution required to change the nucleotide sequence of HBA to HBS? There's only one which causes this. Uh, so that is the one which is, this is an older syllabus now. I think this has been removed from the 2022 syllabus. What is the maximum number of hydrogen bonds in length of DNA containing 700 nucleotides? Maximum number of hydrogen bonds in a length of DNA containing 700. Question number 27, what is the maximum number of hydrogen bonds in a length of DNA containing 700 nucleotides? Now, when I looked at the question, I mean, I thought maybe the answer is wrong, but then as I thought about it, I mean, I also am not uh, such a perfect uh, person. So I was, you know, sort of wondering why the answer is 1050. And then I realized, yes, you see now I drew this, it's a six base pairs, but they're actually 12 bases. So when they said 700, they meant 350 bases on this size and 350 bases on this side. So if you look at the simple mass, 350 into 3, if all of them have CG, then the three hydrogen bonds, they either two or three. So it says maximum, so it means all have three, so three zeros are, so that is very easy. Five threes are 15, five carry up one, three threes are nine, one, ten, one, zero, five, zero. So 350 into three, would be 1050. I mean, if all of them are CGs, you see between C and G, there are three hydrogen bonds and A and T, there are two hydrogen bonds. So if you're saying maximum, 
then that means all are CMG. So maximum is three in each. So every 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 base pair is CG or GC. This side or that side doesn't matter. So then it will be one zero five zero. Then which uh, type of nucleotide is the end product of translation is a polypeptide. Please remember mRNA, tRNA is not the final product. The final product is a polypeptide. Question 29, a polypeptide molecule contains the amino acid sequence glycine, leucine, lysine, valine. The table shows the DNA codes for these amino acids. Which tRNA anticodons are needed for the synthesis of this polypeptide? It's very, very simple. If you had glycine and the DNA was this, this is the DNA. First underline that. So the DNA is CCC. So what is going to be the mRNA? So the mRNA is going to be G, G, G. What is going to be the tRNA? C, C, C. So you know only A or B was correct. Okay, let's look at the second one. Second one was leucine. Leucine. Now, just let's rub this off and let's do it again. So the DNA is G, A, A. This is the DNA. Always write that down. So what is going to be the mRNA? mRNA is going to be C. There's no T. So there's going to be U, U. Then what is going to be the tRNA? G. There's no, this U stands for the T. So there's going to be A, A. So then we stuck with the third one. That was the deciding one, lysine. Now let's look at lysine. If the DNA is T, 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 what is going to be the RNA, A, A, A? The mRNA, sorry. What is going to be the tRNA? U, U, U. Very simple. Science is very logical. Biology is fantastic. It's a lot of very easy way, but if you know how to do it, then you can. If we're going to just want to try and do it, something which is going to do some funny way of doing things, I'm sorry, we're not going to be any successful in life. Question 30, what, which is not a description of a gene, which is not a description. This is the one which is going to really be the difficult part. So B, any section of a molecule that has two strands, each with a sequence of nucleotides that are complementary to each other and held together by hydrogen bonding. Any section of a molecule, which is not a description of a gene. Then question number 31. Which row in the table correctly uh, shows situations in which both DNA and RNA are both involved? It's only involved DNA and RNA in transcription only. You see DNA to mRNA. DNA to mRNA. In DNA replication, it's just DNA replicates. Forms a copy of the two strands. In translation, it is mRNA to protein. So here it said both DNA and RNA is only in transcription. In question 30, I just want to clear this. It's, this is the wrong part. Any section of a molecule. It's not any section of a molecule. It's a length of DNA here. This was correct. Then a sequence of nucleotides was correct. Then a sequence of nucleotides was correct. Any section of molecule, molecule is in a carbohydrate, any other molecule is not in the part of this, not a gene. Not any molecule, any section of a molecule. It's rubbish. It's wrong biological English.